The common carp is a very interesting fish that's treated like garbage in some areas of the world and treated like royalty in others. They're native to Eastern Europe and Western Asia. While some people shoot them by the dozens with a bow and arrow, others spend thousands of dollars and years on a waiting list for a chance to catch a famous carp. The United Kingdom has many carp syndicates which manage small lakes for massive carp and only allow a select few to fish them following strict rules. Carp celebrities in these syndicate ponds include Heather the Leather, who lived to 50 years old and over 50 pounds, and many others with creative names like Bite Mark and Split Tail that often describe unique body features. When caught, these famous carp are handled on large floating pillows, and many anglers apply antibiotic cream to the hook puncture or other wounds before release. Genetic mutations and breeding programs have resulted in three common varieties of carp. The common carp, which is fully scaled, the mirror carp, which can be fully scaled with an irregular pattern of large scales, or partially scaled with large patches of bare skin, and the leather carp, which has few or no scales at all. The common carp is a warm water species, but it's also remarkably adaptable to cool water systems like the Great Lakes of North America. Carp have a preference for slow-moving waters, including eddies and other calm areas on the edges of current flow. They'll sit in these areas waiting for the water currents to deliver a supply of food that settles out on the edges of the current. The scales of a carp are large and golden, and the mouth is turned downward with big soft lips and a pair of fleshy barbels around the mouth for detecting food. The large dorsal fin contains one large spine at the front end. Carp will gather in large groups in the spring, seeking out shallow areas with dark sediments which warm up quickly. You'll find them swimming just under the surface, absorbing the afternoon sun. At this time of year, carp do a lot of jumping, which can help you pinpoint where they're gathering. If you can quietly get within casting range, this can be an opportunity to put your bait within a school of hundreds of carp, but they can be very picky during this pre-spawn period. They're sensitive to sudden movements or noises, and if you spook one, it'll cause a panic within the whole school, leaving nothing but clouds of mud from each fish that bolted away. In the early summer, when shallow bays have warmed up above 60 degrees Fahrenheit and vegetation has become abundant, schools of carp thrash around and release hundreds of thousands of eggs each. This is an impressive sight to see, but don't bother fishing for them at this time. They're focused on one thing, and it's not your bait. Throughout the rest of the warmer months, you can find carp hanging in shallow waters looking for plants and invertebrates to eat. They'll move slowly and travel in small groups. Carp will suck material into their mouth and sort it by blowing silt and other fine debris out their gills or mouth. The food material will be crushed by pharyngeal teeth in their throat as it's swallowed, so carp can process things like snails. Carp grow quickly, and the main predators of larger carp are pike, musky, osprey, eagles, and humans. During the winter, they'll move deeper or seek out areas with warm water inflows, which could be a groundwater spring, an inlet of a warmer stream, or a warm water discharge from a power plant or other industry. Carp are not native to North America and are often considered an invasive species, despite years of intentional stocking by the U.S. government in the late 1800s. Carp were widely introduced as a sport fish and food fish, but their popularity decreased in the 1900s, and they were eventually lumped into a derogatory group known as the rough fish. Rough fish was a name given to any fish that wasn't considered a sport fish or worthy of putting on the dinner table. Ironic, since those were the two main reasons for stocking it in the first place. Carp are gaining popularity again, and they put up a strong fight when hooked. The easiest way to catch a carp is to put a ball of worms, bread, or corn on the bottom and wait. Carp are omnivores and will take a wide variety of baits. I like to use a small sinker and a clump of bread that's compressed just enough to make it slowly sink. I've caught many carp like this before the bread even hits the bottom. Carp will also feed on the surface, especially where people feed bread to ducks and some of it gets away. Watching a giant carp come up to inhale your floating bread bait is very exciting and one of my earliest memories of fishing as a kid. Many specialized baits are used for carp fishing. Hair rigs are used to keep the hook separate from the bait itself, but the hook still gets sucked in along with the bait. Boilies are common carp baits made from eggs, flour, and powdery ingredients. They're boiled to make them firm and castable. These can be made to float or sink, and they can be bought in stores with various flavorings added. Chumming is a common technique to attract carp. This is where you toss a bunch of free bait around your hook bait to stimulate a feeding frenzy of carp. Chumming is not always legal, so check your local fishing regulations. Pack bait is used to pack around your weights, and it serves the same function as chum. It slowly falls off while it sits on the bottom and creates a pile of food and attractant next to your bait. You can pack this around your normal weights or you can use a method weight, which is designed to hold a large quantity of pack bait. Other species are often confused with common carp, including buffalo and many types of suckers. They do look similar, but a sucker's dorsal fin is much smaller and the mouth of a sucker or buffalo does not have barbels hanging down like a carp's mouth does. 
The common carp has a very interesting history and is gaining in popularity as a challenging, hard fighting sport fish. Good luck carp fishing and thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>